Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Venetia and this is the Woolly Worker Knitting Podcast. And today I'm joining you for episode 8 of the podcast. Can't believe we're already at episode 8. It's almost gonna be double digits. For those of you who are kind of new to the channel, I think it's been a while since I've introduced myself, so hello. I'm Venetia, I'm a knitter, crocheter, podcaster based in Scotland, just outside of Edinburgh and kind of close to Glasgow as well, to be honest. So I kind of alternate between the two cities when I want to do something at the weekends. And yeah, I've been knitting for a few years, but I've only really been taking it seriously since last year. I was in the middle of a very challenging, demanding training program for my job, and I really turned to knitting as a way to keep busy, have a life outside of work, give me a sense of achievement and productivity, and have something to do in my evenings that, you know, would prevent me from doing too much work. And I'm really glad that I did that. I have not spent a day not knitting since last year and I've made so many garments it's procured so much joy and this year basically in January I decided that I wanted to be a bit more social about the hobby try and join the community a bit more and I thought what better way of doing that than to make a podcast because I was spending a lot of my time watching other people's podcasts and I thought it seemed like such a nice way of documenting progress and it has been really great fun and I'm really glad to have you all to share all my knitting projects and also knitty chats and rambles with. It's been such a good experience to be able to voice all of those thoughts and uh, give my boyfriend's ears a rest from all the, the, the chat. So anyway, I am glad to join you here for another podcast. It's been a couple of weeks since I filmed the last one. Uh, the last one was pretty crazy in terms of finished objects and works in progress. This one is pretty okay. I will be talking about what I'm wearing today, but just briefly because I've already mentioned that one. I will talk about three finished objects, including a garment and two accessories. And then I will talk about some whips. There's two test nets that are going on right now, which I'm very excited to share and talk about. And then there's just one swatch. As always, as a reminder, I try and keep my podcast very, very informative. And the way that I do that is I put all the information in the description below. So please open it and check it out. I always mention the pattern, the yarn, the color names, and I put links just to make it easier for you. And if I mention uh, people or places, I try and also put those in the description below. And if you want to follow me on other social media, if that's your cup of tea, then you can find me on Ravelry or on Instagram at The Woolly Worker, just like here on YouTube to make it simple. And yeah, you can see more information on Ravelry. I keep a pretty detailed like project page where I put like the needle size, the size of the garment I made, any adjustments, the weights of yarns, like the grams I used. And on Instagram, you can find behind the scenes photos. I post nice photos on my feed. I ask polls in my stories. So yeah, that's me plugging my socials and I think we're good for housekeeping. So let's just get into it. So like I said, firstly, what am I wearing? You may recognize this. I spoke about it in my previous podcast episode. This is my lentil sweater that I did as part of the knit along that was going on this winter from Rebecca de Creabea and Amy Palco, The Meaningful Stitch. They organized this big knit along where people could do the lento and boy was that a popular knit along. I feel like everyone participated in it. Everyone made like two or three versions. Well, not everyone. I started mine a bit late because my yarn took ages to arrive and then I didn't finish it because I ran out of yarn. So I didn't finish it during the time period of the cal in the beginning of March. But then uh, at some point I ordered some yarn from Wool Warehouse. So I was able to buy the yarn I was missing. And then I quickly finished the project in a day. And I, sh I, sh I showed it in the last episode. I made this with Drops yarn. This orange strand is Drops Alpaca in hazelnut. And then the gray strand is Drops Brushed Alpaca in gray. Again, colors are in the Ravelry project and below in the description. And this created a very nice marled effect that kind of looks like rust or like a, a, a fuzzy TV screen or like, I don't know. It's a really nice marl. It was a bit of a gamble, but I'm glad it worked out. I saw someone else do that for, I think, the No Frittles sweater from Petite Knit and they shared that on Ravelry. And I immediately saved that project because I knew one day I would like to use those two yarns together. I wasn't sure at first with the 
swatch but I thought I would go with my gut and it's a simple fast project to do the yarn was very affordable so I thought I had nothing to lose and I'm glad I went for it because I'm really happy with this garment I made quite a lot of modifications you might be able to tell I documented all of these in the previous video as well but the most notable one I think are the balloon sleeves that I made they're pretty much full length balloon sleeves with an eye cord edging. I also did an eye cord at the hem and I added some short rows at the back of the hem to make it drop a bit lower uh, at the back. And I made the increases, make one white, make one right and make one left instead of um, knit front back. I think that's pretty much it for the modifications actually, but uh, yeah, it was just a very nice project to experiment with. Like a lot of people have already said, it's just low pressure, low stakes, you can uh, try things. Oh, actually something else that I did was that I made a pearl seam on the side. There we go. You can see here that line. Just a little, a simple pearl stitch. I did the same thing on the arm, which you might be able to tell here. Uh, which, I don't know, I, I thought I would try that because I was always curious to see if I would want to do that in other projects. It doesn't really... I forget that I did that. It doesn't add anything. It wasn't hard either, so I, I'm still in two minds whether it was like, it, do I want to do that for more projects? Who knows? But I'm happy I did it for this project. Uh, same for the eye cords. I've always been drawn to the idea of uh, replacing a rib by eye cords, and oh yeah, I am 100% going to do that with other projects in the future. I don't think there's anything else to say. I have plans to make another. I have yarn for it. I have this like hand dyed blue and red yarn and white and I'm thinking of holding it with one strand of white so we'll see maybe I was thinking actually of holding a strand of white Kinross for ply the cashmere like lamb's wool it's lamb's wool but it feels like cashmere it's affordable as well and the pattern doesn't use much yarn so I was thinking of using that Kinross for ply next time that I'm in Edinburgh I could pop by my favorite yarn shop and grab a skein or two probably two skeins but yeah let's move on to the finished items that you've not seen yet oh it's already been eight minutes Come on. The first thing, you may have seen it if you've seen my latest video that I posted last Monday. It's a vlog and it was all about this project, so I really will not linger. It's the Lolu Shawl by Sari Nordland. Uh, so here it is. It's a really, really nice pattern that uses cables and lace. It has five charts that you can just also um, repeat to increase the size of this, because the pattern only has the one size, but it easily tells you how to increase it. Okay, this doesn't look good with what I'm wearing, but you can kind of tell the gist. I'm gonna use this as a scarf, probably more than a shawl, just as a way to cover my neck a little bit. I'm feeling extremely French in this. Um, I'm from Belgium, by the way. I don't know if I've mentioned that in my intro. I'm not French, but I speak French as my first language. So anyway, this is adorable, and I talked about it in the vlog. I'm obsessed with the pattern. I'm obsessed with the yarn. It's made with Cardiff cashmere, which is a 100% cashmere yarn. I used two balls of it. I made it with a color like Scarlata, which I think is 714. And I have seven grams left. So I tried to use as much as I could. I don't think I would have been able to increase it. The pattern was super easy to follow. Not so intuitive that I was able to remember it. I still had to have the charts a lot of the time. But like the wrong side rows were pretty easy to do because you just kind of had to follow what you did on the right side rows. And it did become intuitive to the point where I was much faster, definitely. I made this entire shawl in uh, less than 48 hours, which is also why I recorded the whole thing as a vlog. I thought it'd be a pretty good idea to just record everything. I talked about how I picked the yarn, how I picked the pattern. Um, the photo shoot afterwards, the blocking. So if you're more interested in that project, then please, please just go and check that video because it will be much more informative than whatever I can say now. I'll have put some photos here on the screen, but if you want to see more about this project, then yeah, uh, check it out. It was really fun and it made me want to do more accessories because they're a nice rewarding pattern that can just, like a palette cleanser, basically, and also a way to sample nice yarns. So if you have leftovers of some hand dyed skines or mohair, that could be a really good way of using those. Or if, again, you want to splurge for some cashmere, but you don't want to spend more than 30 pounds, 
then you can buy two bottles of Cardiff Cashmere. So talking about the cost, here's the price of the Lolu shawl. Like I said, I bought the two bottles of Cardiff Cashmere and the way I calculate my prices is that I always measure exactly how much yarn I use and then I calculate the price based on that because I might use the leftovers later. So that's why it's not exactly 30 pounds and just a little bit less. That's just the way that I calculate it. I'll definitely make that project again. If you know me in real life, be ready to get one of those at Christmas, chances are. And I, I think I want to make another one for myself in maybe a neutral color to, to, to not have just red. Okay, so next project you will also have seen on the podcast last time that was a work in progress. I had done the yoke. I think I, I was still doing the yoke. So I finished that. It took two weeks to finish. And it's the Palme Tea by Linet or Linné Hole Sensor. Oh, so sorry. This was made with Drops Bell. I talked about this project and the yarn in my 10 t-shirts I wanted mid this spring. I was really eager to try some summer fibers. So Drops Bell is made of cotton, viscose, and linen. And it basically only used less than six kinds for my size. And here's the t-shirt. So it is very blue. This is a bit brighter than it is in real life. It's being a bit blown out by the, the sun. Look at that yoke. It's perfect. Like, those little sections are just so satisfying and so even. That's what you get with circular yokes, you know. Um, I haven't modeled this yet. Today's Saturday. I'm hoping to film maybe something tomorrow outside, but it's pretty cold, so I don't know if I'll be able to... I'll try and take my coat off, but I don't know. We'll see if I can model this. If not, I might take some photos of it, like maybe later in the, in, in May. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so my first spring garment is done and ready for when I can actually wear it, hopefully at some point soon. It was a bit of a challenge to get used to the yarn. I'm not gonna lie, I went through all the colors of the rainbows in terms of do I like this and would I knit with this yarn again? It was very affordable and they have a nice color selection. And it is appropriate for spring, but it's just so weird to get used to. I wasn't meeting gauge at all, I was way too loose, so I had to go down the needle size. I made the size extra small, and I like the way it fits, but it was a bit of a gamble. I feel like I need to learn more about those spring fibers to understand more what size to do and what patterns to pick with a yarn. For example, I would never, like, I really don't think that this yarn would be appropriate for a cabled jumper for winter. You know, like, you, you just wouldn't substitute, I don't know, like Cascade 220 for a cabled iron jumper with Drops Bell to make it a spring jumper, like just go for a spring jumper instead. I hope that makes sense, but basically what I'm trying to say is that the cotton behaves differently than the merino or the wool and it was weird to block as well. Like everything that you, that you think you know about wool, then you kind of have to forget it and understand how this works. It also shrunk a bit in the wash and then it like expanded again and it is really heavy when it absorbs water. I think it can absorb up to five times its weight in water or something like that. Like this is quite heavy. It is drapey but this is he heavier than some of the t-shirts I would uh, than, than some of the sweaters I've made I would assume. I'm happy I did it. It was really addictive to do the yoke because you just kept on wanting to reach the next like eyelid section and after that the sleeves were so fast i was i did both sleeves in one day i was telling on instagram how i think it's one of my first t-shirts that i've knit and i can see myself making many more t-shirts because you just have to pick up the stitches knit for a couple inches then do the rib and you're done it's great i don't want to do sleeves anymore if i can do t-shirts and then the body was a bit of a slog because it's just stuck in it for like the entire like body but it's DK weight, so that went by faster, I guess, than it could have. In terms of the softness, it's weird because it's not itchy. Like, it's not itchy at all, like wool would be, but it is kind of rough. And mm, I wouldn't say it's soft. I think it would be neutral, somewhere between rough and neutral. I don't know. I also think that for summer garments, maybe I'd prefer having fingering weight things because the DK just feels very bulky, basically. When it's winter, I don't mind wearing bulky jumpers, but summer, I don't think I would want to wear something that's like iron or worsted. And I think DK is, is cutting it close. So I think the next thing that I'm going to make, I'll go by from the list that I've made the video about 
I'll go and pick the next one that's fingering weight. I think the Friday tee is a contender because that one is fingering weight merino. I think I'll enjoy knitting with merino more than I did knitting with this cotton. But I'm not crossing anything out in terms of summer fibers. I definitely want to try a cotton merino blend. I think I miss merino basically because there was no animal content in this yarn whatsoever. So I was missing the elasticity and softness of um, wool oh, or alpaca. Yeah, I want to try some like alpaca silk t-shirts and yeah. So in terms of the success of this project, I guess I think it's a success. I'm happy I did it. I don't know if I'm like urged to make another one again using that yarn again. So I probably will, but it's not a priority and that project didn't convince me. So let's let's keep going and let's keep trying. So total cost of this project will be here below. As you can see, it's insanely cheap. This is cheaper than a t-shirt. I would have bought in a store would be so yeah no regrets but um if you like cotton and if you like knitting with it then you can make yourself a whole army of jobs bell t-shirts if you wish okay and then the last finished item you also have seen already in the previous episode i talked about the rosy socks which is currently uh, a test knit for fiber and fern i think the pattern should really come out soon so keep an eye for that but um, I finished the pair, so here are the two of them together. Oh, yeah, I think they look amazing. They look like a work of art. Uh, it was quite tricky because here this part is three color color work. Apart from that, those charts were pretty easy. There were only a couple of rows in the flowers where I had to catch my floats, but everything else you could just do it without catching the floats. Um, it's a heel flap and gusset. You have the color work again and then the toe, it's a wedge toe. I'm super, super chuffed with them. I'm so happy I was able to do the second sock so fast. It was definitely tricky to motivate myself, but then because of the sections, I feel like it is addictive because first the cuff is quite small, then you do those things, then you're already doing the heel. Then there's only like a few rounds here of knitting after the decreases. Then you're already doing the next color work section. So it, it goes by way faster than you think it would. I made the first sock in two days, to tell you. The flows are not looking great on the inside. I think my critique of this pattern would be, I don't think color work sock patterns should have three stranded color work because it's just way too many floats and it's too bulky at the ankle. I'll show you the floats. Ugh. Yeah, so you can see this is a mess, right? There's uh, purple and green everywhere then we get a bit more normal on the inside they are very fitting they're very snug which is a good thing because I don't want my socks to be too loose this is the case with a lot of my socks that I made in the past they become just too loose and I can't wear them inside shoes anymore and I've got to wear them as house socks so these are very snug if anything, like a little hard to put over the heel, but once they're there, it's perfect. I hope that they stay like that. And I made them on 2.25 millimeter needles for the entire thing. You increase a little bit your stitch count for the color work. And the stitch count of my size, the size small, was 56 stitches. So that's also why the socks were so fast, because it was only 56 stitches. And this has really motivated me to try, because um, I'm in the quest of finding the perfect sock recipe. And what I thought I was going to do was to do a 64 stitch sock on two millimeter needles. But now I'm thinking that maybe the 56 sock could be good. So yeah, taking some good learning from this pair of socks. I'm super excited. Like when I wear them around the house, I've done it a couple of times, I feel like a, a, a movie character, like a Victorian, like, rich person. Yeah, I, I can't stop staring at them. The yarn for that uh, is yarn that my friend Madeline actually destashed and gave to me. It was Filkalana Arweta in Marzipan. And then the other two colors I had in my stash, so I didn't buy any yarn for this. It was uh, Malabrigo Sock in Ivy. And then um, the sock, a hand-dyed sock yarn from ooh, Dystopic Fiber in the colorway Advanced Deceiver, which is a really nice variegated purple. I'm really happy with that choice of the variegated purple on the marzipan with that variegated green. 
Um, I think this is better than if I had chosen just like a pure white. I like the beige. And if I were to do this again, which I don't know if I would because I don't think I need the two similar pairs, but here's a tip for someone. If you want to make this pattern, please somebody do it with a black main color and a blue rose. That was going to be my second choice. I was, I had the yarn for it as well, but I thought I'd go with that. So yeah, a black sock would be amazing. So the pattern is not out yet, but it will be soon. Also, here's a tip. If you have any of that yarn from uh, Dystopic Fiber, they do a thing where if you share your finished project on Instagram, then and it, you tag him in it, John, then you get a 10% discount on your next order of his yarns. So I've got my discount. I might buy some yarn. Although I'm going to a yarn festival in June, Tangled Gala Shields, if anyone in Scotland is going to that, hit me up. So I'm going to try and save money for, for that and not make any online orders until then. Can I do that? It's on the 3rd of June. Can I not buy yarn for a month? Probably. So yeah, the rosy socks, huge success, made me want to finish my other colorwork socks and then do more colorwork socks. But I think actually what I want to do is take a break from colorwork because you'll see my next few projects are colorwork. So I think that I want my next socks to be either cables or lace, or maybe just plain stockinette, get a quick, easy reward. I I'm not putting a final price on the rosy socks because like I said, I got this yarn for free from a friend, the marzipan. I got the purple from my boyfriend. The only yarn I paid for myself was the green uh, ivy color. And like I used, mm, I used four grams of the green, which is negligible. So these are my free socks. The next project is a work in progress and it's a crochet project. So the context for this is that my friend Sam from the Sugary Stitch said that she was participating uh, in the sort of craft fair that we have here. It's the Royal Highland Show held in Edinburgh in June. And it's basically the, a part of it is that there's a craft fair where there's lots of different sections, categories. There's spinning, crochet, weaving, crafting, quilting, embroidery, woodworking. There's a lot. And I wanted to participate in the knitting category, but I wasn't too inspired by the uh, prompt. The prompt for the knitting was shades of purple, and I don't like purple. This is my only purple skein that I own. Uh, and it was a gift for my boyfriend, I didn't even buy that myself. Uh, the theme for crochet, however, was shades of blue. And as some of you may know, blue is my favorite color with gray. So I thought that I'd participate in that. You could do, you could crochet a granny square blanket or you could crochet a shawl. So I went with a shawl because blanket might be a bit big of an undertaking. So I looked up crochet shawls on Ravelry. I sorted it by hot right now to see what people were making these days. And one pattern came up on the front page because there's a knit along going on for it at the moment. The pattern is given for free. It's from Lilia Bjorn Crochet and it's the Ever Blue shawl. And it was a pattern that she released before as the evergreen shawl with a special green gradient yarn, but she's re-releasing it as a blue gradient. And I thought that's perfect. So I bought the yarn cake. It's Sheep Cheese Whirl Blueberry Bam Bam. So it goes from dark blue to, to light blue to white. And then I bought two little balls of Sheep Cheese Whirlet in the color Ice and Bilberry. And those are gonna helping, th those are helping me do the border of the shawl. Last time I spoke to you, I had done four fifths of the shawl because there's repetitions and I was almost done with that. And it was getting really, really tedious because the shawl is increasing. You start at the sort of middle and then you increase your way out. So it gets longer and longer every time. And it was just taking so long for a row. But I had to kick the gears because it is due in three weeks, the online submissions. Like you have to submit it and then I'm guessing send it by mail. So I have to keep going. And people were saying that the border, the crochet mosaic border would take as long as the shawl. So now I've started the mosaic border and yeah, I can see that this is taking a, a while. So I'll, I'll try and show you, this is gonna be absolutely impossible to wield because it's the biggest thing ever. I'll try and show some photos as well. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. That's really cool. So you can see the the lace really well in this actually, that's perfect. And then as you can see here is the little mosaic border, which is looking so crisp. Uh, so yeah, the shawl doesn't even fit in my frame actually. 
Yeah, there we go. That's one half, and then the other half here is dangling. <laughs> Yay! So it is pretty huge, as you can see. I can cover myself up in this as I'm crocheting. I'm crocheting on a 3mm crochet hook for the main body and then a 2.5 for the border. And the mosaic border is going swimmingly. It's a lot of fun. The way that you're doing it actually is that you're only using one color per row. So normally what this would leave you with is the fact that you'd have one end at one end and then the other end at the other. But actually you're doing two rows of white and then two rows of blues and then two rows of white. So then you're just carrying those yarns here on the edge. Um, so yeah, you can see here they're like little pairs of rows. And then you're going down with a double crochet, two rows below to make those vertical lines. Um, I'm following the chart for this as well. There, there are written instructions, but the chart is just way e easier to visualize. Uh, so yeah, it was a bit of a slug towards the end, like I said, for the main body, but I've picked up the speed now because the mosaic is quite nice. There was a chart and it had 18 rows and I was like, oh, I'm doing like a nice few rows a day. I can be done really soon. But I didn't realize there was actually another chart after that that also has like 18 rows and then you have to repeat some of it. So I'm nowhere near done the end of this. But I'll see, what I might do is I might crop the border, the mosaic, because the pattern is quite, like, it's quite a big border, so it wouldn't matter if I split that in half. I'll see how far I can get, get to. I'm giving myself a goal of trying to do, like, six rounds a day. So, like, two white, two blue, two white, and vice versa. I hope that this works. I might need to increase that later but I've got a lot of deadlines at the moment this is what the second half of this episode is going to be about is deadlines but it's it's nice and enjoyable it's nice to do something else than knitting I'm sure a lot of you can relate like if you have other hobbies uh, if you're like me and you're obsessed with knitting you might be neglecting them but it's nice to to get sucked in something else for a while so yeah really happy to be taking on this challenge I'm not like expecting to win or anything the prizes are like a whopping 10 quid for first place which doesn't even cover the yarn uh, let alone the the work hours but it's just nice to to be a part of something and, and to just uh, put my knitting and my crochet out there I hope next year to participate again in this show maybe do the knitting category that would have been nice um, in terms of the finished item I don't see myself wearing this shawl to be honest it might be a nice blanket for the couch although it's cotton and acrylic, so I doubt it'll be very practical. I also don't think I want to hang it anywhere because it wouldn't really go with like the flat. So I don't know, this might just get tucked away, sadly, but it's a nice process crochet, even though it's not going to be a product crochet. But if I know anyone in my life that likes shawl, then they're more than happy to claim it if they want. Okay, the next project is a really exciting one. It's a test knit for Florence by Handmade by Florence and it's called the Mist Sketch Sweater. She talked about that in a couple of her podcast episodes. She designed it ages ago, she says, and did a sketch of it and then she only recently was able to knit it and write up the pattern. I was so excited and so surprised to be chosen for the test knit. I've applied for pretty much all of her test knits and I was really happy to be selected. In the application form, she asked what yarn people were thinking of using. She made hers with a strand of merino and a strand of mohair held together. Um, one in blue, one in white, like for the two contrasting colors. And I said that I was going to try and do a non-mohair version. So some people have actually went for a DK yarn, like single strand. And then me, I went with a strand of alpaca 1 and a strand of alpaca 2, both from Isiger. So the alpaca one is a 50% merino, 50% alpaca, and the alpaca, that's alpaca two. And alpaca one is 100% alpaca, lace weight, so you're holding the two strands together to hopefully get a DK. But I showed that yarn last episode and I was so excited about it, got lots of compliments on my color choice and like that green specifically. It's the color 46, by the way, if you're interested. And I went on a swatching rampage I'll put some photos here because it matters a little bit. I made this swatch. This is my third and final swatch. The other ones didn't make the cut because I repurposed the yarn. So I went down the needle size because I thought 
that I would be looser and I realized that I was too tight. I needed to size up. So fair enough, I do that again. And I go up one size and I'm realizing that it's quite loose and I don't know if I like the fabric because it is very loose, but I'm still not meeting gauge. And because it's a test net, I have to meet gauge. If it was just me, I would have just gone with the fabric I liked and then sized. If mine was too tight, it would end up too small. So I would have sized up. I would have done a couple sizes up to get a smaller garment. Yes. Anyway, so the other thing I was wanting to test out was whether I wanted to hold green dominant or white dominant. So can you tell from this swatch what color I held dominant here, if you know what I'm talking about, color work dominant? Correct. I was using white dominant in this one. But I'll put on the screen a swatch of like side by side. Here is when I'm holding white dominant and then here is when I'm holding green dominant. Can you tell the difference? Because there definitely is one and I was going crazy over the choice. Basically I thought that holding white dominant would give me too strong a line and I was going for low contrast as per the, the vibe of the sweater because I think that the the lines are very graphic already and I didn't want them to stand out too much. I also think that when I'm holding the white dominance, I get like, you know, holes in the little V's. You, you can see, yeah, you can see the inside of the V and I didn't like that. So I held green dominance and I was happy with my choice. Some people were saying, oh, but why would you not hold the white dominance and lose your color work and you're spending all that time doing color work? But worry not, the color work is very visible. So just something to keep in mind if you're going to make this pattern is maybe swatch with both, see what you prefer, or look at the testers' versions. And if they mention in their notes whether like which ones they held dominant, then take that into account. Also very important is you have to stay consistent within yourself of what you're choosing. Because some people weren't the testers and then they had to start over. So I will show you my progress so far. I've made a lot because it's a test knit, so I've got to hurry. So that's my yoke, neckband, and one entire sleeve. Woo! Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll show it, like, I'll show a video of it down so you can see better. But basically something happened where you're doing the color work here, and then when you're picking up for the neck, you're doing corrugated ribbing, and corrugated ribbing uh, when you're doing color work here for the body, it's knit one, knit one, knit one, knit one. Like you're just knitting, but you're alternating colors. But for corrugated ribbing, you're alternating colors and you're alternating knits and pearls. So here my knits are in white and my pearls are in green. And for that, I held white dominant because I didn't want to be purling with my dominant color. So this is where I was kind of caught up with my decision from earlier where I was holding green dominant, that wouldn't have worked here. And at first I thought this might look weird, but now that I'm seeing it on camera, I think it's completely fine, the neck. I think it's fine. And I did the same thing on the sleeve then, where you've got this one band of color work, where it's knit one, knit one, and then this corrugated ribbing, which is knit one, pearl one. Corrugated ribbing is really weird. My color work is notoriously loose, uh, and corrugated ribbing is supposed to not have as much stretch as normal rib. So even though I went down two needle sizes between this color work and this color work, it's kind of straight, isn't it? Like it doesn't pull in like normal ribbing would. It is quite stretchy. Uh, I did an Italian bind off in the white as suggested in the pattern. So yeah, I haven't tried this on yet, the sleeve. It looks quite loose. I'm doing size B, the second size. Uh, it was quite fast to do because it's DK weight, like the sleeve was pretty fast. The body took a long time because you're just doing one by one color work, like it is a bit tedious. The neck was a bit tricky as well, although the picking up was extremely easy because Florence walks you through exactly how many stitches to pick up and when. Oh, I have run into a really sad problem here. When I was picking up the stitches, I realized I had dropped a stitch in the German short rows. So here you can see I cut it with a stitch marker in the inside. 
And I have no idea, I'm in denial right now, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I must have not caught the double stitch properly in my German short rows. You can't really tell from the front, it's here, but there is a loose stitch, there is a loose stitch right now that I need to secure somewhere. I'm not gonna let that bother me too much, it's gonna be fine. The other thing I'm not so sure about with this project, sadly, is that the neck just doesn't sit right at all. And we don't know at this point in the testing group whether that's something to do with the pattern or just individual um, projects. Because a couple of people like me have had issues with the neck basically just like sticking out and it doesn't cinch in my neck, you know, like normal ribbing would. It just stands too tall and too high and too rigid which is because of the corrugated ribbing and then individual tension with color work. And then some people it's just completely fine, like Florence. But she has herself said that she might thread in an elastic at some point later, like she can see that happening. So I went and bought some elastic thread, one black, one white. I'm gonna block it first to see if that solves the problem itself, but chances are I'm gonna be threading a white elastic like here at the top to just make it cinch in more. When I tried it on for the first time after splitting for sleeves, it was fine. When I did the neck and tried it on again, I was feeling quite deflated because it looked awful, to be completely honest. And I was like, oh, it's so much work. It's a test knit and it doesn't look good. But I have high hopes for the elastic thread. I think it's gonna solve a lot of my problem. I'm happy I did the sleeve. I'm gonna be doing the second one. It's gonna be really easy because I've, I've like gone through it once. And then the body is just following the length of the body and then do normal ribbing in the green. There's no more color work after that sleeve. So this should be this should be done really soon. The deadline is like very early June, so I have a month. So that's fine, that will be done, no problemo. And then I'll do a photo shoot outside. I can't wait because I, I really, really like these colors. I think it's definitely a, a step outside the comfort zone. I usually don't wear pastels, but this is a really big motivation to buy more pastels. Like that mint green, like pistachio green, I think I see much more of that in my future. So yeah, that's it for that test knit. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you th have you done corrugated ribbing? What are your thoughts with that? It seems like a nightmare design-wise to try and like make it work. And then, because it depends so much on people's way of doing color work and corrugated rib. I know Mary Wallen has a lot of patterns that have that, so I don't know how those are gonna work out when I get around to doing them. Okay, then the last work in progress is another test knit, and that one is for Tetis Lutzak, which is a designer that someone actually uh, mentioned in the comments of one of my very early videos. And I went to check her out and I was immediately like, in awe of all of her patterns. I favorited half of them. I bought the yarn for a couple, but I've not made them yet. So technically this test knit is my first pattern from, from Tetis. And yeah, I had applied, I think for one of hers before, but didn't get picked. Applied for that one and got picked. And then I thought, ooh, bad timing because I'm doing Florence's one right now. They're both full garments. They both have the same deadline. Tetis is a bit earlier, actually. It's the end of May. And Tetis one is a fingering weight slash sport. It's called a Pictus Pillover. I'll put a photo here. And I went through something with that as well because I wanted to use sport yarn. She uses Darnie which I have for another sweater. So I didn't want to use the same yarn twice. I thought try something else because my goal in life is to try all the yarns in the world, which I know is never gonna happen, but why would I buy the same yarn twice when I can try something else? So looking for sport yarns in some of my favorite yarn shops online, trying to get inspiration. And I found this sport yarn called the Rawwork Sport. And they had in stock like this color, which is oh, the perfect, sand it's called sand perfect neutral it's beautiful and they had it in stock and then i, I picked a contrast color which was this one uh, which is an olive green and i really really like those colors I, I thought this would look perfect like this would be the contrast if you don't know about raw work they're uh, a very small business based on a single flock of sheep in munich 
Uh, they tell you when the shearing took place, where the yarn was spun in Bavaria here in autumn 2018. I'm just reading from the, the skines. Yeah, and then um, it's woolen spun. So this is extremely plump. And that was my issue, basically. I picked the wrong yarn and I should have chosen something that was much thinner, like, you know, heavy fingering, light sport. But I picked this very thick sport. So I started swatching and I quickly realized that there was no way I was going to get the 24 stitches required for the, the gauge swatch. I was at like 16 stitches and I needed 24. Like there's only so many needle sizes I can go down, down to. Then was, and then I was feeling quite down because I had bought this yarn and it was like quite pricey. This is like 18.50 a skein and I bought four. So I thought I can't just keep buying sweater quantities of yarn for projects. I had even considered for the mist sketch sweater that my alpaca might not have been the right choice, like because it was too loose a fabric. And I was half considering buying a new yarn and saving the alpaca. But imagine if I had bought four sweater quantities for two tests, that's just wasteful. So anyway, so I thought I would not buy any more yarn. I would save this raw work for another project. And I think what I've settled on is that I'm going to use this raw work for a Highland slipover by Ozetta, because I think I can meet gauge. And then for the Highland slipover, I had already bought some yarn, which is the um, Studio Donegal Soft Donegal in grey. But I realized that I had actually bought too much of that grey, like five skines, and I would only need like three, three and a half. So I'm going to repurpose that Donegal to make a bunny sweater from uh, Orlan Souk. So yeah, that was a lot of like planning. It took like a whole evening of figuring out and reshuffling, but I'm happy with my decisions. So everything has been repurposed and everything has a new, per like a new project that it's earmarked for, so we're good. So I'm gonna save that yarn and I thought I would look in my stash for yarn that would be suitable for the um, Pictus Pullover test knit. And I found this yarn that I had bought at the Perth Festival of Yarn. And I think it would be really cool to be using my like special woolly wool that I bought at a festival. This was also meant to be then a different project. I think I had bought this to be a moonset slipover from Azetta. Um, and I had played it safe and I had bought three skeins of this instead of two, which then worked out great because now I can make a sweater out of it. And this is a fingering weight yarn, semi-worsted spun, 300 meters per 100 grams, 100% British wool. It's quite rough. It's uh, full of spinning oils. I've been noticing when I'm knitting. Uh, it blocks really beautifully and like it plumps up and it's really, it evens out a lot with the block. So yeah, it's a nice kind of like, I don't know if it's a warm gray or a cold gray. I don't know what, what you would say. It depends on the light. I feel like when I'm pairing it with a warm color, this looks cool. And when I'm pairing it with a cool color, it looks warm. Oh, I'm so sorry. I keep sneezing. Anyway, so I have enough of that to be the main color. And I needed a contrast color. And I had some Jameson and Smith, but like none of them were enough. I have like one kind of a color. or And the goal really was to not buy any more yarn. So in the end, I went with my uh, woolly knit cones because they're cones. So even though they're earmarked for sweaters, I definitely have leftovers for it to be a contrasting color here. So I'll show uh, photos of the swatches here that I made. I made one in uh, mallard blue and one in gold. And I asked people on Ravelry to help me choose, uh, people on Instagram to help me choose. I shared photos of just the skines and then photos of the swatches. So here's the gold swatch that I kept. I ripped out the mallard one and oh, look at how pretty. It looks nice from far away. From close, it's not my prettiest work because I'm doing the technique where I'm keeping very long floats at the bottom to basically like knit in the round, in like in a swatch. So that's why they're that's why it's a mess. But here's my swatch, and this is meeting gauge, uh, which is great. I didn't have to change needle sizes because they're so small. This is on three millimeter needles. So something that started out as being, oh, it's a sport way, plump, like sweater, it'll be cool. And now I'm working on three millimeter needles with fingering weight. I think the woolly knit is light fingering as well, but oh well. 
I'm in now, no turning back. And I had a look at the pattern that uh, Tetis sent over. It is huge, it's very long, there's tons of instructions and tons of charts as well. It's one main chart for the yoke, but then the underarm section is different for each size. And it took me a while as well to realize that in all of the written instructions, a lot of whole paragraphs are just for different sizes and can be uh, disregarded. So at first I was very overwhelmed and I thought, I can't read this pattern, there's way too much going on. There's so many instructions, like, I thought we would just start and go to the yoke. Why is there five pages before the yoke? But it was all different sizes for like the cast on and the setup rounds. It's a circular yoke. And then I realized that it was fine, like, if I were to print this out, I could just highlight my size instructions, but I'm... Um, I'm just reading it on my, my computer. So I'll show you what I've done. And don't laugh. It's not a lot of work. It's not a lot of fabric, but this is a lot of work. It's like hours. It was a nightmare as well to find needles for it because I had to, you have to go down a few needle sizes, like when you're casting on and doing the, the setup rounds and stuff. So I had to, to find my 2.75 needles. I had to find a long enough cable. I used some sock yarn, like sock needles at some point, but now we're we're good. Now we're in uh, cruise speed. Everything is established. We're just increasing every X number of rounds for the yoke and doing the color work. So here's what I've got. <laughs> so yeah, that's the neck hole. And then you've got the color work, which is obviously curling up right now, but I'll show you actually. Let me just put some stoppers on these bad boys. I don't want to do the podcaster thing of, oh, all my stitches fell off the needles as I was trying to show you something. Okay, so yeah, that's the color work so far. So not, not a lot, but it's going to be gorgeous when it's done. Like small needle size color work just looks amazing. The thing I don't like about this pattern, but that's like not the designer's fault, is that I think there's no finishing to the neckline, like it's a rolled neckline, so this is what it's gonna be. And I don't know if I like that, I think I would much prefer it if it was rib or an eye cord. So what I might do is I might do the pattern as written, do my feedback, blah blah blah, and then when it's over I might pick up the stitches here and do a different neck, but that's fine. It took me so long to get started and the chart is not going to be memorable so I'll have to look at the computer all the time to do it. Um, and and <laughs> I'm still increasing rounds so they are getting bigger and bigger. So this is taking long and it's only about to get longer. So yeah, it's not my favorite project to work on at the moment. And I think that's the issue I was having this week. It's like three of my projects, as you can tell, are test knits or deadline, deadline knits. And I wish I had at least one of them be a pleasure project, but I also know that I can't cast on one because if I do, then that's all I'll be wanting to work on. And then I definitely will get stressed about the lack of time for the deadline knits because I need to finish all three of those by the end of May. So I really just need to have discipline. But you know, who does a, a hobby for discipline? Like, no, you do a hobby for pleasure. So I showed you last time that something I had bought yarn for at the Oxford Yarn Shop. At the same time that I bought the yarn for my Mist Sketch Sweater, I bought yarn to make a Levitate wrap by My Favorite Things Knitwear, and I've swatched for it. So this is Isagur Eco Soft in the shade 8S, held with Trio in the shade Chestnut. And it's so nice and fluffy and thick. This would be made on 5.5 mil needles. I think she recommends six, but I like the fabric I'm getting with this. So I'm going to go with that and then size. Ooh, what do I do? Size up. I'm normally a size extra small, but I'm going to do size small because this is going to be smaller than what she recommends. Yes, okay. I, I, I did the swatch and it got me all excited, but then I know that I can't cast this on because otherwise I'll be working on that all day long but this would this is so soft uh and i know it was kind of a pain to work with that yarn before like i love the final result but it is kind of it's a weird feeling it's kind of like the drops bell like they're not my favorite yarns to work with but i definitely like the result of that so sorry to end on a on a lukewarm note but 
I just thought I'd tell you the truth about where I'm at knitting wise. Once I get rid of all those test knits from the needles, I'll be casting on some exciting projects. Like I said, I'm going to be doing the levitate wrap very soon. I'm going to try and get the other chicken sock done, but that's also why I'm not doing the chicken sock now, the eggs for Easter, because I'm already doing three things that like I have to do. So I don't want to add a fourth thing that I have to do. Otherwise I'll just quit knitting. So once I'm done with a few test knits, I'll do those socks. And then after I clear out that sock needle, I'll be able to cast on a new pair of sock with sock yarn I already have. I kind of want to work through my sock stash. And I don't know, I think I might try and knit a camisole next because it's nice to have a t-shirt in store. I'd like to have a camisole in store and I want to have a cardigan. I have a couple of cardigans that are very tempting for me to cast on. There's one by Sari Nordland because doing the Lolu shawl motivated me to do more Sari Nordland patterns as if I needed the motivation. But then I could also do the bunny cardigan that I've just mentioned with the Donegal that I already have, although that might be quite warm, but not as warm as a mohair cardigan. I don't know. I've been wearing my April cardigan a lot since finishing it, which is so rewarding. I love wearing my knits, as you can probably tell. In terms of the acquisitions this uh, month, I guess not much. Like there was obviously that raw work, that raw work yarn that, yeah, I think I'm going to make the Highland sleepover with that. Unless I end up finding another color work sweater that uses the amounts I have. I only have one kind of that. So I only have 300 meters of this and I have 900 meters of that So who knows? Maybe I'll find a sport sweater. I'm not gonna be casting this on too soon So I'll save this for for next because I really like the, them two together And another acquisition that I did which I showed in my previous video with the Lolu shawl is I was convinced to buy some more cashmere So I bought some Cardiff cashmere on sale. Normally this is 15 pounds a ball but uh, this was on sale at a really good price where it was basically like £12 for a ball, which I, I feel like we're never going to get that kind of discount again. So now is a good time. And this is the colour that I went for. It's Cosmo. You might recognise this from Petite Knit. This is the same colour she used in her Elizabeth blouse. And this will be the pattern that I will be doing because I don't like picking colors and I think this really suits me. I, I love night blues. So I bought 10 balls of this and it's a very special yarn. It'll be a very special project. I'll probably do it later, maybe for my birthday, actually. My birthday is on the 2nd of July, so I'll, I want to do something special knitting wise for that. Or yeah, maybe I should have it knit to by my birthday, but it might be too warm. I'll see. If you have any ideas of things I could cast on to have finished for my birthday, let me know. But yeah, that's all for today. I think it was a good length of episode. I think I, I, I'm happy to have done it, to have filmed today and not next week because maybe more things would have happened and I would have forgotten some things. I think filming every other week is a good, a good schedule for me and it, it lets me speak the length I want about the projects that I do. But let me know if you have any thoughts about today's episode. I hope that it was relaxing for you, that you got some nice progress done on whatever you were knitting on, if that's what you were doing while watching. I hope that it was relaxing. As always, thank you so much for choosing me to spend time with in your uh, knitting time. If you have any questions or thoughts or comments on, on anything at all, don't hesitate to leave a comment on the video or message me on any of the platforms I've previously mentioned. I'm quite responsive, always happy to have a chat if you ever want to. And it's always the best part of doing those YouTube videos is to hear back from you. Otherwise, it's just me putting things out and like screaming in the void and the void doesn't talk back but you guys talk back, so we're good. And I hope to clear off the needles a bit before I see you next. And hopefully I'll see you with some more finished items very soon. But take care of yourselves, happy knitting, and see you all next time. Bye.